Okay, Parents of Faith Formation. So I just wanted to make this final video if you didn't have a chance to listen to the, uh, to the recording of the parent meeting or you weren't at the parent meeting. Uh, I just wanted to just make sure that everyone was on the same page and I gave you know one last, um, one last video to catch everybody up uh, for those of you who weren't able to either listen or to uh, be present at the meeting. Uh, so kind of the main thing that we talked about was uh, the, uh, the uh, sacraments, so the sacrament programs that we have here, as well as the attendance policy. Uh, so starting with the, the attendance policy, we do have um, we do have some pretty short uh, sacrament preparation classes. So we uh, we have confirmation, which is two months, and we have a uh, sacraments camp, which is a, which is a week long. Uh, I've talked to other directors of religious education, and they they have told me that those numbers are incredibly low. Uh, they don't know of any other parish that does it like that. I don't know of any parish that does it like that. Um, but typically what classes are for confirmation are anywhere from one to two years. For most of them, I've heard it's probably close to two years for getting somebody ready for the sacrament of confirmation. Uh, we do it in two months here. Uh, for the same thing for First Communion, a lot of parishes I've talked to is at least a year and we do it in a week, right? So it's just a really, it's a really shortened version. And I kind of get what previous DREs were trying to do or what the, the intention was of the program, uh, of of um, the director when they were setting this up. Um, but I think kind of going through it, there was some blind spots that maybe we didn't consider. So I think it's helpful to reassess how that's working. Um, one of the things that I think is super important, and there's three reasons that I really want to put in place uh, this attendance policy. I'll kind of start with, kind of already touched on the first one, is that our program is so short that there's not really enough time to give somebody the foundation of the faith, right? So like my, I was telling the parents, my confirmation students, like they're coming and I'm ready to like get these kids, you know, faith on fire. Like I'm ready to just like get these kids going uh, for the Catholic faith. It's not so much to teach them the basics. Um, the expectation is that the basics are already there so that we can build on that. Like, why do we know the Hail Mary? Why do we know the Our Father? If I'm teaching them the Our Father and the Hail Mary at the same time, it's like, uh, it's like, you know, kind of showing up uh, for your first day of work or not your first day of work, but uh, first day of school and you just don't have any of the information previous to, you know, to lead up to that class so that you have the basics. So it just really slows us down. Uh, and that information is very important uh, in order for someone to uh, really advance in the faith and the faith life and the, the spiritual journey. So that is one thing. Um, uh, and I think the last thing, the last of the three points is that um, on confirmation day, I have to stand before the bishop and I have to say, like, I know that these kids are ready to receive the faith. Like, that's, that's on me. So I have to stand before the bishop and say that. And if I'm kind of waffly there, if I don't really believe that they are, uh, that's a problem for me. Like, I don't want to be put in that, that position. That's, that's something uncomfortable. And ultimately, I'll have to stand before God and and explain myself you know were they ready or were they not um and so i would like to avoid that i think the best way to do that is to make sure that these students have an, a constant inflow of information so by the time they get to classes they have, this is all very familiar with them and we can give them that final push so that the faith kind of drops from their mind to their hearts right that's that's the ultimate goal um so that was that was the main thing that we talked about the attendance policy. Um, the option with the COVID pandemic is that you we will give you guys the opportunity to if you desire if you if this fits better with your schedule, uh, you can teach your child in your home. If you would like to be the catechist for your family, feel free to do that. Uh, we have the materials so we can provide you with uh, the information that's needed. Um, I think that. <clears throat> Obviously, there's, there's reasons that parents would like to opt in for that, but um, I would like to encourage, for one, I think that the classroom setting is good. I think it surrounds your students with, or your kids with other Catholics, and they know that they're not the only one involved there. And so that when they go to school, they at least like have a, a social network um, uh, so that they don't feel alone or left out. So I think that's super important. I also think that Having a catechist who's been doing it for years or, you know, kind of has a familiarity with teaching the subject, I think is also good. Um, and I know we have, we have excellent catechists, so 
I think it's a, it's a, it's a good thing to send them. Um, but obviously for reasons of health issues, uh, feel free to talk to me about that. There's one other caveat, but I can mention that to you in person. Uh, so last thing, I think the other main thing that we talked about in the parent meeting was, um, was just like how to kind of go beyond the classroom. So faith formation is great at getting the information out there. It's great at getting these kids like what they need to know. Um, but really the, the main, the, whether it's going to stick or not, really falls down to the parents and the family, the culture of Catholicism in the family. I'll explain that in a second, but I'll read the statistics that I read at the meeting. So 50% of millennials uh, raised Catholic no longer identify as Catholic today. Uh, so half the babies that have been baptized, half the kids that have been confirmed, and half the young people who have gotten married are no long, would no longer say they're Catholic. Um, the other 50%, out of the other 50%, there's 7% of of that 50% that says that they still actively practice their faith today, um, which means they go to weekly mass, they pray a few times each week, and they say their faith is extremely or very important to them. Uh, so I would just like to maybe expound on that. I also read at one point when I first got here that 90% of that 7%, um, they come from a pool of of uh, families that practiced their faith and they took their faith seriously and it was just woven into their family life. <laughs> Give me one sec. Sorry, my, my throat was dry. I had to get some water. Um, but so that was uh, most of those uh, 7% of Catholics that still actively practice the faith come from a family that their faith was very important to the family. And so I mentioned maybe a couple thoughts uh, for the parents um, is, you know, to kind of pass on the faith and to really, I think it's, I think it's important, uh, for parents to keep the faith themselves. I mean, just keep a inflow of information, inflow of understanding, but more than that, like a, uh, a relationship with God alive, you know, like that is something that just like any relationship requires work, requires understanding, learning, um, and then just like communication. I think my, like the most beautiful thing that uh, I've come to find as Catholic is just the prayer of being able to talk to God. It's just awesome. Like that is just like a profound experience that we get to have if we choose to. Um, but I mean, it's kind of a complicated thing. You cannot navigate it by yourself. I can promise you that. Like I've had a university. I've had 10 years of the best books. I have access to all the spiritual authors, anybody that I need, the doctors of the church, the saints, like everything that I need, I have. Um, but just to figure it out on your own takes a very long time. So we at St. Mary's would like to offer the parents an opportunity uh, to just like learn, but more, not not like on a kid's level, like at, at what level, you know, parents should be understanding and, and learning the faith. Um, and I threw out some examples of, you know, what parents might be interested in. This was just an idea that one of the parishioners gave me or one of the parents gave me that they would be interested in, is having classes for the parents during faith formation. If you're interested, they'd have coffee and donuts, and you can just kind of sit in and grow deeper. So uh, w my first uh, example or my first class that I just kind of threw out there was, how do we respond to Protestant objections to the faith? Uh, so an example, why do Catholics worship Mary? We do not, but people do not know that. So why do Catholics have a Pope? That's also something that people aren't super familiar with. Uh, how do we deal with family members that don't agree with our beliefs? What are some basics of the faith? What is purgatory and why do Catholics believe in it? How do I grow in my relationship with God in my busy life? And what does a relationship with God even look like? Practi practically, how do we obtain one? Uh, so just like really, really solid information uh, that we would love to just help the parents. We'd love to provide that option for, for those who are interested. And if you have any topics that you would like to discuss, feel free to send those to me and we can set up classes that we can deal specifically with these things that uh, parents are wondering about. Um, uh, some things that maybe you could do in the family that I mentioned was watching the chosen series that is an amazing series on um the catholic or just like on the gospels they do a great job um i don't know if kids read anymore but the chronicles of narnia i found that to be an awesome you know just tool for for spiritual growth when i was a kid 
Uh, having the dad read the stories of the saints. So we have a really good saint book that we're hoping to get to all the fathers, all the parents coming up here. Um, uh, bless them with holy water. Give them little holy water fountains. Have a statue of Mary outside on your front lawn. Have them wear scapulars that are blessed by the by um, the priest. So Mary promises, to, made a promise to St. Dominic. Anyone who dies clothed in the scapular will not suffer eternal fire, right? So if you die with the scapular and uh, you've been blessed by the priest, then you have this promise, right, that you will not suffer eternal fire. Uh, so really just like, and then lastly, say, that, say at least a decade of the rosary with the family a day, just to get that, those graces necessary for our spiritual life, for our spiritual strength, to get that into our life. We need graces, and, but we need to ask for them. Uh, and, the, and the rosary is the best way to do that uh, for our, ourselves, for our family. And um, so those are just some ideas. But yeah, so really, um, there's a lot there. And I think Pass on the Faith for me is like, like it's everything to me. It's my whole life. And I want to be able to provide people with the best opportunity there. I want to make sure that the kids get it. Um, and I just want to do my best. Uh, so if you have any thoughts, anything that uh, you would like to bring to my attention, if you have any things that you're uncomfortable with, please, please, please just like talk to me. Uh, and it'll help me a great deal. Uh, I'm really here just to kind of, you know, make um, make receiving the faith an easier an easier thing for people. So, okay, I'm a little over time. I hope you guys are well. Keep praying for me, and hopefully, see you soon. God bless. Bye.